We will begin by selecting a new sketch, clicking OK. Over on the right hand side, we are adding our background color, which is a really light lavender or lilac color. So on the right, we have our layers. On the left, we have our toolbox. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner, there's a plus sign. I have added a new layer. So you'll see that there's that blank layer that the blue box is around. I've then selected the technical pin on the left hand side and started adding my colors from lightest to darkest at the edges. I've selected colors that all are within the same color scheme or color family. I've also added the smudging tool on the far left hand side and have smoothed out all of my lines to make sure they are nice and cohesive all throughout my digital canvas. One thing you have to be mindful about as you are using the smudging tool is what direction you are going. Notice in just a little bit, I accidentally moved my finger across that way. Any direction you move your finger is the direction that the smudge tool will smudge in. And so if I draw a straight line across, it will smudge straight across. If I draw in a curved fashion, which is what I'm doing here, then it will also smooth out in a curved looking line. So you have to keep that in mind as you are working. I'm still working on the very uh, second layer, but I'm darkening the edges, smoothing things out. This layer is so important that you are getting correct because it is the base for your entire project. So we wanna make sure that we are taking our time and having this look really, really nice since our entire project will be placed directly on top of this area. So while it seems like it's a little excessive and there is so much layering to it, it is absolutely crucial that we get this portion right. What you're going to see in just a little bit is that I then start to add little dashes. Um, similar to if you've ever seen Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night, same sort of concept. I wanna show that there's some movement within this piece. I'm also going to add my moon using a very, very light yellow. And then once again, selecting the smudge tool and smudging it throughout my background. If you notice, I am still working in the second layer. I have not added another layer. At this point, you could have if you wanted to do a separate layer with this, but I want all of my colors to blend nicely together, so I chose not to. However, at the end of the day, as the artist, you get to make those decisions to see whether that would work best for you or possibly not. So what you're going to see next is I'm going to add another layer. So do you see where the blue box is on the right hand side? I've added that by hitting the plus side once again, and then I've selected the technical pin on the left hand side, and I am adding the beginning portion of my silhouette, my haunted house or castle silhouette. So you'll see that I have some black uh, lines drawn on my digital canvas. I'm now going to start filling in those spaces. It is absolutely crucial that you are doing this on a different layer. If you try to draw this on your layer of your background, so like the one that we just spent a lot of time on with all the purple, and you go to erase it, you will erase your entire thing. You do not want this to happen, so you have to be mindful of the layers that you are actually creating it on. Next, I'm going to start drawing in my haunted house design. So I am going to start with my door, I'm then going to go right above it and draw my window with window panes throughout it. Keep in mind that this is supposed to be based off of an older home that's slightly falling apart. So if it's not perfect as far as like the structure and the shape of it, that's totally okay. So don't get too worked up over it. Now what I'm choosing to do is just to create a basic outline to begin with to make sure that it's the shape that I would like for it to be. You can add different layers for the different things. So maybe you want one layer for your house structure, one layer for your roof. You are more than welcome to do that. I just wanna keep it as simple as possible. And so I am just coloring it in using a black technical pen and just filling in my inside area.
Now, if you need to zoom in at any point, you can take your uh, two fingers and pinch inward within the screen and it'll zoom in and out for you. But as I'm sure y'all already know, being little tech wizards, I'm now starting to add a bunch of accessories and then the second half of my roof. So here you have these little spindles coming off of the roof edges and I am trying to get them within my line. So while, yes, I want them to look older, I have a weird thing about my lines crossing over. So now I'm going to add the upper portion of my house. I would like another window. I would like a balcony of sorts. And so I am just adding that to the very, very top of my haunted house. Now I filled in my top portion of my haunted house, but I also want to add these little spindles for my balcony area. And so once again, they do not have to be perfect. They can look a little bit older, a little bit, jagged if you would like them to but spending time trying to zoom in and make sure that my lines are actually connected is important to me now at this point i have my basic haunted house done with just a few little additions i can now also add other items such as a fence a cat um a skeleton whatever you would like or if you are choosing to do an old castle maybe you have some knights in armor over there maybe you want a tree like what i'm about to add these are all different items that you can add now be mindful that sometimes when we are talking about spooky things there are things that are not school appropriate um things that involve a lot of death and destruction so be mindful of that as you are creating to be choosing stuff that you know that i would have approved of like a cat a cat could work. Um, so we're once again, just creating the silhouette of these items. So that way you can avoid having to draw all the features, which takes up a substantial amount of time. So here we'll see the end product of where I have placed my cat. Perfect. Perfect. You catch that? <laughs> so here you'll notice that I skipped over a few different recordings, but on the right hand side, you'll see, I think five or six different layers. I have a layer for my background layer for my purple, a layer for my purple dashes similar to Vincent Van Gogh, one for my house, tree, cat, and uh, the stepping stones to the actual house. You can add as many layers as you want. It's totally up to you. I like to add more layers, so if I make a mistake, I can easily fix it. And then here is our finished product. Ta-da!